Hi, my name is Joseph Brodam. Praise the Lord. We are grateful to God for another opportunity. You know, the last time you watched the part one, we are still in um, Kasua, downtown of Angkor area of the Church of Pentecost. And I'm sure you watched the part one of the area ahead. Um, I'm talking about Apostle Dr. Benjamin Ali. Now, by the grace of God, we are here again to continue the part two with a discussion. But before I do, let me acknowledge my sponsors and come back. My name is Joseph Bedanka. Stick and stay. You are watching Pen TV. Pen TV, it's all about Jesus, and the program is Periscope. We'll be back after the break. Some lace armor chrome are here today, or the original designer leather belt, designer shoes, pa pa pa, loafers, watches, suits, shirts, any khaki trousers are yatiti so fo fo fo. Businessmen, asofo. Oh, be a dear woman. For who could look at some leaves? Need channel combination, papa. Pa. Some leaves were rolling spa. A bit too much a brown sign. Emu. Yeni ADB. Ne din sheni mo. Frying a wall. Zero three zero two six seven three nine nine zero zero five seven four two five six three eight two zero two four three three eight one eight six three. Some leaves a whole nine yama papa wall. You're most welcome. As I told you, we are on the part two, and we are still speaking of the area head for downtown of Angkor area in the person of Apostle Dr. Ben Ali, a man of so many names and titles. Others call him pastor, others call him uh, apostle, others will call him lecturer, others will say he yeah, is mentor a lot. Apostle, you're most welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for still having us Thank you. And in, in, in your house. We are very, very much grateful. So, ending the part one, mm. then you are advising that we must understand that in the kingdom of God, nobody is indispensable because Jesus can use anybody, anybody. provided you are willing yeah. and obedient to him. So we are still tracking your progression. And you've spent eight years in Benkum Secondary School. So tell us how you were able to transit from your teaching and I'm sure you were enjoying it, praying as well, and then finally transiting into the main ministry life. Yeah. Uh, let's start the journey, how it began. Yeah. In fact, um, the call to the ministry had been there for a very long time. Okay. But I'm that kind of person. I fear to do something that maybe God has not called me to do. So mm. I wanted to be very cocksure that God was calling me into ministry. So even though, I mean, ministers had told me and they wanted, um, God was calling me to ministry, confirmed by a lot of officers and right. even members and those things, I was hesitant. And I wanted a clear cut direction from God before I would do anything. So it happened that somewhere in 1989, mm. I visited a nephew of mine. He happened to be with Assemblies of God and working with Ghana Commission Bank. So when I went to his place, it, it was a weekend. And um, I went there, we, we stayed together, we had fellowship together and all that. Then Monday, uh, that, that week, Monday, I didn't have classes. So I decided to stay over again and then go Tuesday early dawn to a crapping. So that Monday, in fact, I was burdened 
to find out from God what he had for me. Mm. And that time... And I you mean all this while that you've been, you, you've been working with the Lord? Mm -hmm. He hasn't in any way spoken to you directly that is calling you into the ministry? I, 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 I could sense the call, but I hadn't heard anything clearly okay. from him. So I wanted to... So by intuition? Yeah, you, I knew you, you that... You feel it? Yeah, that I had a call. Want yeah, the, but the, I wanted... The audible that voice. That is a clear him. direction. Right. So there were... That Monday, there were some four things I asked the Lord... One, whether he wanted me to be in full-time ministry mm. or I should stay as an elder and help. That's one. Because I told him I didn't want to do anything he didn't want me to do. And if he wanted me to stay as an elder, I was satisfied with that. Then two, concerning my marriage. Mm. The Lord had revealed the lady to me about four years earlier, but I never met her physically. So I said, ah, by God, you revealed this person to me about four years ago. I haven't met the person, so I don't know what I'm to, supposed to do. So he should tell me something positively. By revelation, you mean the picture of that person came to all? I had a, yes, I had, no, no, not an intuition. I had a revelation, a vision seen i saw the lady the name was given to me but wow. i didn't know her so and then there were other two uh, issues i would be told there were four things four issues, yeah. so that time when i was praying and asking god all these things my nephew he had gone to work mm. so i was alone in the house right. he was also not married so and he was a, a leader of uh, Assemblies of God, their youth uh, ministry. Mm. And they called them Christ Ambassadors. Yes. He is so yes. He went that day, Monday, he went from work, he went straight to church. So he didn't come home. And I think they prayed so long there that by the time he arrived, it was around 11 p.m. And I was in the hall almost dozing off, so I just, when he knocked, I opened the door, he came in, I just prayed a short prayer, and we went to bed. So the following morning, we normally get up and have the, uh, worship the Lord together. So we were worshiping, and that morning we worshiped the Lord for about 50, 55 minutes. Just worship. We didn't ask anything and this, and just worshiping the Then. I felt the Lord had a message to be delivered to one of us mm -hmm. that very morning. So I told him, okay, let's be silent before the Lord. The moment I said, let's be silent before the Lord, and we calmed down, he got up and started to prophesy. Then he said, my son, you asked me four questions. <laughs> That was how the message came. Mm. You asked me four questions. Now, listen to the answers. But I will dwell on the ministry as per the other one. Yeah. yeah. So he said, one, I want you in the full-time ministry. But before you leave the school, I will send your brother from the University of Science and Technology by name Elder Otibuati. He will come and take over the work you are doing at the school. And then you will come into full time ministry. He mentioned the name. Mentioned the Watson. name, yes. And this my cousin is not a Pentecost person, of so course. he doesn't even know. This guy, he was then even a tech. So well, I took note of the this thing. And the I other three were also answered. Yeah. So I went back to school, I was there. Then somewhere within the this thing. This guy, he came, this Oti Boatin, mm. he came that as a national service personnel. So when he came, I saw when they introduced themselves and this thing, he mentioned Oti Boatin. Oti Boatin. <laughs> I, la I laughed. <laughs> I said, hey, God is, 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 is wow. really this thing. So now, now, I mean, before we, 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 we proceed, mm. so... What should we do 
as young people coming up. Mm. To be able to hear mm. God yeah. speaking <laughs> expressively mm. to us, explicitly yeah. to us, so that we will know his dealing. Because there are some times, yeah. I mean, I get worried. Mm. You go to church, you go to, you pray mm. and pray, thinking that we hear something from God to convert, mm. even give you a direction on mm. what to do. Yeah. You know, what should we do? One, to depend on, you, you, you must spend time in the word of God. Okay. So that you can discern, if you should hear any voice that goes contrary to scripture, you should know that it's not God speaking. Okay. So the studying the word is, in, uh, is necessary. And then prayer. You must have time to pray. And prayer is not just talking to God. It's communication between you and God. Many Christians pray, but after praying, they don't wait to hear also from God. But after you've prayed for some time, you've talked to God, you must allow him to also talk to you. Sometimes he can talk to you, that is, in your quiet. Sometimes he may not do it directly to you. He can use somebody else to speak to you. Just like my, my, my nephew, what happened? Yes. <laughs> So that is very, very, very important. But the problem with many of us is that we don't have time to wait when we pray. Okay, after we've prayed. That is it. When we, after you've prayed, you'll be distant. Sometimes it can be an audible voice. Sometimes maybe you are not thinking about some, but some ideas will start flowing into your mind, you, which you are not thinking about. It's and also another way God speaks to, okay. to us. Okay. <laughs> or if it is a, 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 a step you want to take, and you are thinking about that particular step. And then you listen to your spirit. In your spirit, you feel some joy and peace. Okay. It means the Holy Spirit is saying, go ahead. Okay. But if you feel some uneasiness, as if you are sad, you are some tight You are feeling, struggling to accept it. That is it. It means, be careful. You see, so there are so many ways God speaks so to us. So it's not always that God yeah. will, you hear... Speak. Audible voice, audible voice instructing no, you on what that to is do. It, not but all. these are some of the areas by that intuition, that is it. by giving you calmness and peace within your that spirit. Is it, yeah. okay. After you've prayed. Yeah, after you've prayed about the whole thing. So, so okay. when uh, the, the guy came and then he mentioned his name, he was Otibuatin and this thing, I, I began to laugh. But he didn't know why yeah, I was laughing. About two days later, he came to me. He said, oh, Elder Ali, uh, <laughs> there's some chance which has opened for me. I said, oh, what is that? So I've had opportunity to go and teach in Zambia. A contract, science teachers were needed in Zambia, and the government was contract. That was when Apostle Echo Wood and others, they went to they Zambia. Left. That very time. Okay. So when he said that, I laughed. You see so he said, oh, I'm telling you something and you are laughing over it. Why, why are you laughing? I didn't say anything. I, I think about two days later, he came to me in the staff common room. He said, hey, uh, during my quiet time, the Lord spoke to me this morning. The Lord said, I'm not going to what? Zambia. Zambia. The Lord says, I should take over from you. That's why he has brought me to this school. Take over the work you are doing and that he is calling you into full-time mm -hmm. ministry. Then he told me my first station. That time I had not been to the national interview. He told me, you'll be going to, what he said, you see the Adomi Bridge. You cross the Adomi Bridge and you go to the town that is there, Japan. that is where you are going to start your ministry. Before I went Long before you were called. Before I went to the national interview. And well, I went to the national interview, went through, went to Bible school. When they were doing the posing. At, at, at the national interview, who and who did you meet as uh, a Apostle Pokuina was there. Okay. Apostle Nati, this thing. In fact, I've forgotten the full the full uh, well, how distance, many were there? I think they were six. Six. Seven or so. Mm -hmm. And you remember, remember one question they asked you? 
Oh, yes. Are you struggling They're to very answer? No, I, in fact, all the questions they asked me, I answered all. Right. The f I remember very well. The first question, when I went in, it was Nate who asked that question. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Which is that one baptism mentioned in that verse? And I said, it is baptism into the body of Christ. That is when you accept Jesus as your Savior and Lord, you are baptized into the body of Christ. The man started nodding his head. So every question is surprising. Every question they asked me, I was able to answer. Great. And uh, so we went to Bible school when council meeting, the, the postings came. So who, who, are, who are your mates then at the Bible school, if you remember? I'm a gacha. Okay, Apostle Magasa. Uh, Ajiman Bedu, okay. uh, who retired at uh, this thing. Uh, Apostle Labi Wete. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tema. Yeah. Then we had one Kwesi Ansa. He was our first missionary to Israel. Okay. Then MS Apia. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Even though some of them were my mates in the Bible school, but some were seniors to okay. us. <laughs> This thing like Labi Wete, MS Apia, Ajiman Bedu, they were seniors Six in the Apia. And then we had one Swanzi, he was, he died at Tema area in an accident. Then, oh, we had quite a number, uh, Ag uh, Agoba, okay. Pastor Agoba, and right, right, yeah. right. So they were my mates. And so we went to the first station, and by God's grace, from there, uh, we stayed there for three years, then from there to Bolga. Okay, so we want to start. So now you've got into what? What time did you get to your your, your first station? Is it in the morning or in the evening? What time? Uh, the first in? station. Mm -hmm. Oh, it, it was some around this time. Around this time. Yeah, about four. Three, four, four, four. Yeah, there about. And there about. Okay. <laughs> so now let us understand. When you got there as an overseer, what you learned from the Bible school mm -hmm. and the field, you yeah. see. Theory versus practical. practical. I mean, give us the, 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 the <laughs> differentiation. Let's get an understanding. I and how you were able to blend your theor theoretical aspect vis-a-vis mm. -vis the practical and to the experience, the things, the challenges you met and how the Lord helped you. To be and frank and that. honest with you, in fact, uh, the Bible school where uh, the, the doctrinal uh, teachings mm. were helpful, yeah, helpful for us. Mm. But those things were not what you would take into the field per se, practically. Mm -hmm. Practically, you have to depend on the Holy Spirit. He will show you what to do. Okay. Without that, if it's just the knowledge that you have acquired, it will be very tough for you. So even though I had that this thing and, uh, and the, the training at the Bible school yeah. and all that, and I thank God our our time to, uh, they used to, in fact, I think, okay. uh, talk to us about the importance of prayer, the importance of studying the word of God yourself, mm. having your personal devotion. Mm. So these things are the things that help you actually when you go out there. <laughs> but the, the training in the Bible school, just it gives you knowledge, exposes you to so many things so that you know this is what you are. And one of the practical distances that we had was this uh, Pastor Laria. That one, you, you are taught how to conduct yourself yeah. on the field yeah. and all that. So that was very, very Excellent. helpful. Yeah, okay. very, very helpful. Uh, and the fact that um, we had very good, I mean, lecturers, I mean, who actually impacted our lives at the Bible school. So it helped us very much. We had. Apostle Fukuina, we had Prophet Yabua, mm. we had Evangelist Eli Nyaku, right. we had uh, Kerry, the principal yeah, was yeah, Kerry, yeah, yeah. Uh, Pastor Kerry, uh, we, we, quite a number of them, and in fact, uh, uh, this thing, uh, Apostle Nati, right. uh, all these people, so it, it, it was wonderful, mm. the kind of training, and, but I was so challenged by Prophet Yabua. Mm. In fact, I actually, any time the man entered the class, I could feel the presence of God in, mm -hmm. a, in, a, in a very, I mean, special way. 
I don't know whether I was. What's the feeling? I was the having that. Was, was, uh, really was me you. alone or mm. the others. In fact, I was. So, so when I came to the ministry, I tried to get closer. You see, I tried to get closer to him, and in fact, I learned a lot of things from the man. Uh, even though he he never pastored me, mm. but that kind of this thing. So when he was uh, the chairman. I remember I used to go and serve them at Kofudia. I was then in Kofudia area. At that time, it was Eastern region. So I would go and serve him and so many things. And sometimes he would give you some pieces of advice on some issues. And, <laughs> and I'm that kind of person. In fact, the old people, mm. when I, I get to them, I, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> questions to ask for them because yeah for them yeah. because i want to learn from excellent them and see what i mean uh, help them to be what they were mm. uh, and then also uh apostle walker right yeah and i i i presided in his hometown yeah as a presiding elder and uh, he ordained me as an elder Oh, okay. And yeah, so people like that. And that is why you can enjoy the power ministry. <laughs> yeah. I can understand where you're coming from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I suppose, yes, practical wise, yes. We, we want to understand what happened yeah. on the field. Uh, uh, especially when we went to our first station, we were very young at that time, yeah. very young guys, myself and my wife. Oh, but before so you continue, at that time you had married, so can we know mommy's name and she as you speak now, how many kids you have? Mary Ali. Okay. Yeah, we have four kids, mm. our own biological children, four. Right. But there are others we took care of. Okay. <laughs> so when we went to our first station, we were very young. <laughs> so when we got there, uh, at some of the older people say, ah, uh, we are looking for pastors, these small, small boys <laughs> and girls that they are bringing to us. I mean, the, some of them will pass these comments, even to your hearing. But, uh, well, didn't bother you. yeah, it didn't bother me, you see. Um, in fact, the stations I've been to, one of the places I had serious talent was the first station. <laughs> um, what were the challenges? The challenges were that, you see, um, when we went there, there had been this war between the Aquamus and the Avis. Okay. So that kind of tension, tension. And tension. tension was there. Mm. And a little thing you do, they will think you are siding with okay. one, one group. Mm. So when we went there, and where we were worshiping, the central chapel, it was located at the Aquamu site. And then the, the plot of land to us uh, belonged to a certain lady, a Dickness, who happened to be a Krubo. Mm. And so we were worshiping there. It didn't belong to the church, actually. But the, wom uh, the, the woman, she wanted the thing to be given outright to the church. Mm. But the children were not resistant. Yeah, in favor. So it happened that that's the genesis of my problem, my challenge there. So it got to a point that um, one every man, one Mr. Dunyon, he had a, a big plot with some small structure on it and he wanted to sell it out. And the church, too, we didn't have our own property. So the presiding elder at that time, one, uh, I've just forgotten the name, Nyado, it was called Nyado. So he went to meet with the man and then discussed about the plot of land. I did it with, without my knowledge anyway. So he went and then went straight to Prophet Enum at that time, he was then the regional head and told him that, oh, in fact, we don't have a place of our own. The place where we've been worshiping belongs to somebody, and there are problems with it. So maybe with time, we may have some serious challenges. Yeah. So if you could help us to secure that plot of land the man was trying to sell. Right. So 
Prophet Enum gave him one million. It was 1.3 million that time. So Prophet Enum gave him one million from the region. And then uh, he asked Akusumbu district to top it, top, uh, give us the 300. Because when the district was created, right. they created it, but they didn't give us anything. Mm -hmm. So he said, because of that, they should give us the 300 to, so that we could go and pay. So the man collected this money, went and paid, did all the, without, you know, even the presbytery, we, we were not aware. And then when he finished the documents and everything, he came one day and told me that this is what he has done. And the documents had already gone to Accra. They, they have stamped on this thing. So now, the, legally, the place was our this thing. And that time, I had organized some fundraising. We wanted to do something. So now, where do we build? You get the point. Now, where we were worshiping was not our property. It belonged to somebody. And the family members are fighting the lady because the lady was trying to give it to the church. Right. So I met with the presbytery. OK, so now what, what do we do? This money, we cannot, if we go and try to try to develop it on the other one, which doesn't belong to us, yes. there could be serious problems. Okay. And since the other one, the trustees of the church have stamped on it, and then it is legally ours. Why don't we, hey, then he brought problem. That was, the, in fact, it was very serious. So they, those on the Akwamu side, they said they would not participate in anything that we were going to do there. Unfortunately, some people heard about this and they didn't know the details of the case and they thought I created the problem, but I had nothing to do with the problem. The problem was between, I mean, between the elders, uh, this group, the fashions. that is it, this group. And unfortunately, the building, the, the other one was on the Ewe land, the Ewe side That's of the town. Funny. So, so the other guys coming from the, uh -huh. the Akomu side uh -huh. are refusing because of the struggle. That is it. So because of that, uh -huh, people who didn't know the details of the case thought I was the one who created the problem. But well. By God's grace, as uh, when I went there to, I tried to relate very well with the chiefs. So the chief at the AV side, when he realized what was going, he organized the youth to come and help him putting up the thing. So we were able to raise the thing, and <laughs> something strange happened. There was a rainstorm, and that other structure it came down completely. So now they don't have a place to meet. So what do they do? They, they were compelled to come to. <laughs> oh, it was interesting. And, and, and to you, and to you, who, who would have orchestrated all this design? Would you say it's God who did that by striking the whole thing? <laughs> well, <laughs> it could be that God wanted them to put a stop to what was going Those on. Things. Because, I mean, we are one. I mean, yeah, why should, to, yeah, we, in the church, we shouldn't bring the Body of Christ, we yeah, have a this thing, that I'm a Kwamu, this, this, no, you see, so no. that, this thing. But by God's grace, I was able to bring the two groups together. together. Praise the Lord. And then, just around that time, I was transferred to go to Bulga. So how many how many years did you spend at the uh, Japan was yeah. three years. Three years. So we went to Bulga. You went to and Bulga. And Bulga to I like I mean let's, let's let's hear you. How, how many years did you spend? Also three years. Okay. We went to Bulga. Mm -hmm. Oh I mean things were very okay. But we had one elder who was creating problems in the place. But I will, by God's grace, in fact, God has given me the grace to handle certain things. So when I went there, by God's grace, initially the area head who came and took over, uh, Apostle Obinetria, he didn't understand me. Later on, he understood me. Let's take, for example, somebody, let's say, he goes to commit, say, adultery. Mm. And then he realizes that uh, what he has done is this thing. And he comes to the pastor or the apostle, confides in you, tells you this thing. If there is no pregnancy involved, you can caution him and this thing, maybe pray with him. But to say, oh, because he has I'll, said I'll, it. I'll go ahead and no, 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 no. I think that one. You see, uh, 
Suspension is meant to correct a person, not mm. to destroy the person. Of course. Because if mm. you are going to take an, an action which will make a person lose his salvation, then it's not worth it. You see, it's not worth it. So sometimes we need to look at the issue in its own light before we actually listen. And there are some places like this, uh, they, they also discipline, but they are a bit careful. Uh -huh. So if sometimes these areas, we can be careful about some of them. Look at uh -huh, in handling this thing. Okay. God, you are dealing with souls. You are dealing with souls. That is it. And you, and you, and you, it's because you of them sending people away. That is then it. You go and say they go and mount a, a podium. Uh, 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 they say people should come to no, the knowledge of Christ. It, it's not the best listen. So that also we need to look at very carefully. If uh, the thing is so serious, so I mean, so open, mm. everybody knows. Then that one, if you are disciplining the person, fine. But there are some issues. Um, we don't have to drag the thing too much and then make it look like uh, as if the person is the worst person. You see, one thing people fail to realize is that the seven abominable sins, mm. fornication, adultery, drunkenness, and all that, they are not among them. So which are they? Pride, okay. hatred, Envy. You see, this, uh, if you read Proverbs chapter 6 from verse 16 down, these are all mentioned there. Showing discord among brethren. V it's, it's an abomination to God. It's, it, it's among the abominable sins. But many times we just look at those, I mean, those open mm. this thing and we do the, this. The thing. known ones. That is the known ones. But there are things, sometimes some people. Maybe someone, the way he talks, mm -hmm. probably he may not be very cultured in the way he talks and this thing. He says something and somebody will use that one. As, as a base of condemning. That is it. But the person who is even saying that about the person, mm -hmm. maybe you envy people. You hate people. Mm -hmm. These things are within you. So that one nobody sees, but God sees them and it's very, very serious. Okay. So in Borga, apart from that challenge you had with the elder, yeah. what happens again? Let, now let's come to the things that God did in, in, in Borga. Oh, a, a lot. I mean, Borga, there was, the revival there was just great. When we went to Borga, Borga was a place, in fact, uh, initially people saw that it was very difficult to pastor there. Mm. And I remember when I was transferred to go there, the woman, uh, women's leader for Kofrudia, mm -hmm. she was weeping because she had worked in Bulga before. And she knew us very well, so she was weeping for us. But I didn't understand why she was weeping. And then she was talking about the challenges, even when you go there, uh, even support for the minister and all that. Uh -huh. So, but when we went there, by God's grace, we took a certain stand, we said, and uh, we, we know some people who will go there because the mission area, they will want to maybe sell one or two things to support themselves and this thing. Mm. I told my wife, if you want to sell anything, let's resign and go back to our secular work. Because we told God we're coming to serve his people, not to uh, what. And if, say for example, you were, I told my wife, you were working with the prison service, if you did your work well, at the end of the month, they will pay you. We are serving God. We are working for God. So go, the God who has also employed us, if we do it well, he will, it. He will take care of us. And I say to the glory of God, we never lacked anything when we were involved. I mean, what to wear, what to eat, <laughs> what to eat, and all that. And somebody from Presby just came, said, the Lord has told me that. As long as you stay here, one of your children, the school fees and everything, I'll take care of it. In Presby, not from Pentecost. So, I, I, and over there in Bolga, two people supported us from the U.S. Up to today, I don't even know them. I don't know them. How they got my contact and then they, they, they sent support to us. So another you spent uh, three years in Three Bulga. years. Then from Bolga where? To Huni Valley. You went to Huni Valley? Yeah, and Huni Valley, <laughs> it was also <laughs> another, another place 
<laughs> initially, before we went there, uh, uh, there were so many. The pastor even was on sick leave, so the place was just uh, there. Mm. So Apostle Amani mm. he was then at uh, Aboso. Aboso. So he was overseeing the place. So when we went and we took over, mm. you see, when uh, a particular church, I don't want to mention, when they realized there was no pastor, they quickly went and planted a church mm. in the town. Okay. So some of the members went there. Went so but when we went to take over, we started fasting and praying, teaching, and I tell you, within a short time, all those people, they started coming back. Those people who had left, they started coming back. And the way, I mean, numerically, spiritually, financially, everything, everything transformed. So the regional, uh, the area head at that time, I was uh, JKSL. He said, no, we have to change the name from Huni Valley to Huni Heaven because <laughs> he can't believe what... Yeah, you can't be in a valley and be doing <laughs> Yeah, that is it. Right, right, and right. And right, God right. was healing people, a lot of things. I Praise mean, healings, Lord. miracles. And by the grace of God, God has given me some grace that when, let's say, I'm organizing Holy Ghost baptism like this, or even impartation, I mean, it's very easy for the people. God. Oh, yeah, people easily. Mm -hmm. I've seen more than 400 baptized in the Holy Spirit in less than five minutes. So many times. Uh -huh. Even the short time I came Because here. you had desired mm -hmm. the spiritual gift. <laughs> that that, the is, power that, that well. is it. And then <laughs> I thank God for the people that I worked under. That's you see, true. People like Apostle you. Pukumina, right. Prophet Enum, uh, Apostle Walker. Walker, and all those. Right. Who, yeah, Apostle Asia, J.K. Enin, all these people, you see. Right. So, so I, from that place, how, how many years do you spend also at the the Abosso? Uh, only only valley three years, okay. and then oh, so you've been three, three, <laughs> three, 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 yeah. Then finally, then, then I was. It was there. I was picked to go to UK to study, and come and yeah, I'm interested. Lecture. So, what, 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 what did you study in UK? Yeah, UK. First of all, the, when we went there, we did. I did higher education in theology. Higher education in, uh, in, in theology, that was for one year, and then went into the MA program. So I did MA in Pentecostal and Charismatic issues. That was my area of study, and it was a very nice course. And, and, and you learned. came back to teach? Yeah, so when I came back, I mean, I've taught a lot of courses at uh, both PUC yeah, and we'll come to life at P PUC. <coughs> yeah. But we also understand that you are one of the few authorities in, in Greek. Yeah. Where did you learn it from? Was it part yeah, of your from, study? From, from, the, uh, from the UK. When I went there, I studied that. And Alongside your Pentecostal like, it, 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 that, no, or the, 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 that one was for the first yeah. one year, I studied that. And then after that, I did that also at the master's level. Uh, that is the advanced Greek, Greek exegesis and all that, you see. Uh -huh. So there you, you look at the Bible text, uh, how translations and this thing. So uh -huh. sometimes when we're talking about translations, people think uh, this guy is yeah, yeah, too, yeah he's too something. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but uh, sometimes... That's the truth. Yeah, that's the If truth. you understand that, that, that is the Greek, that is how it was, uh -huh. and then you can quote it well. That is it. So sometimes... Okay. You look at the translations. That's why uh, some religious groups they say, "Oh, our Bible is incomplete. Incomplete is full of." Mistakes. I remember one of the programs that I attended. He mm -hmm. said that mm -hmm. you like what the Fanti said. The, mm -hmm. the, yeah, the account uh -huh. translation. That is it. Yeah. And it has some yeah. Yeah. So you see that sometimes some the of translations the translations that are problems are inconsistent. It, that is it. Uh -huh. You see, uh -huh. so though the basic truth in Greek is there. That is it. But, but the interpretation. The, the interpretation. You see it. So. Uh, like uh, uh, I was uh, teaching and then Mark 11, 24, mm. the tree translation is different from the Fanti. The, the Fanti one, uh -huh. that's what you And the Fanti one is the correct mm. translation. Mm. Uh -huh. Mm. Uh -huh. But the other one, uh, Muenya, mm. you see Muenya no, is, is future. Okay. But, uh, uh, but the Fanti say Humenya. It's an instant. Uh -huh. You should believe you have you received. Have received. Uh -huh. So whether you feel something or not, and this, and really, when you study the word of God mm -hmm. and you study it correctly, right. every uh, 
every promise in the Bible you fulfill, you get the blessing from it. I, see. Yeah, I understand you also can do some Hebrew as well. How about oh, well, with Hebrew, I mean, I, I didn't do much into that okay. because uh, when I was, I, I initially, I wanted to do both together. And then the, one of the lecturers, he is a Hebrew, this thing, he told me that I should do one first before another. Th that is it. So by the time I finished... Well, Hebrew language is very <coughs> difficult. Yeah. And then when I finished the, this thing, unfortunately, mm. he was taken ill. And he was the only one to, who was authority, authority in, the in the Hebrew. So because of that, uh, I, that one I had to come home and then study under one uh, Dr. Oredu. Okay. So I did the Hebrew up to a point. Is it Oredu with the Regent University? Yeah, who was with Regent okay. University. He's, he's now a he's, Yeah, he's a, a Hebrew in the yeah, he okay. is scholar. So but uh, what was your thesis about in the... The, the MA level? The MA level, that one was a highly theological. It had to do with the, the theology of men, Jonathan Edwards and Charles Finney. Oh, okay. They were people so who... So you did a comparative? Yeah, that is it. I mean, the way they saw things. Okay. Um, Jonathan Edwards was took to one extreme, mm. and this man too took to another extreme. So I was looking at the streams and then how you can the bring them, bring a balance okay. in their teaching. Okay. <laughs> For because the benefit yeah, of, of, of the church. Of, of the church, yeah. Okay. So if you look at Jonathan Edwards, he was, he was, I would call him a hyper Calvinist. Mm. You see, he believed, you see, and that is where people talk about the sovereignty of God. Right. They use the sovereignty of God not the way the Bible actually teaches it, mm -hmm. but they go to the extreme. When we talk of sovereignty of God, it doesn't mean that God can do everything. Mm -hmm. The Bible doesn't teach that. Right. The Bible says it is impossible for God to lie. It, God cannot change. Mm -hmm. You see, so when you say God can do everything, it means all these things. He can change and all, those and all those things and these things. So we need to maintain a balance, you see. So when, the, like, for example, when the Bible says, with God, all things are possible, it doesn't mean God can do everything. That's not what he's saying. But the angel was telling her that if God has given you a promise and you can hold on to what God is saying with, with him, then the thing is possible. That is what the angel I was I trying. Really uh -huh. But people take it differently, give their own interpretation and this thing. So you came back and then now you've done your PhD. What did you read on with your PhD, your thesis? On? Yeah, the PhD, I, I did that on prophetism in the Church of Pentecost. From, from where? Yeah. Which institution? And, um, yeah, in, uh, Cape, uh, University of Cape Coast. Okay. And this teaching, uh, this, uh, this examination of prophetism, the Lord laid that on my heart somewhere in 1999 mm. when I went to the university in uh, in the UK. Okay. So some aspect of it, I did it over, pre presented a paper. Mm. And I still, uh, they have, I had some, this thing, uh, a copy which I printed out and brought home. Okay. Um, but somebody asked for it and the person never returned it. Unfortunately for me, I didn't keep a soft. Oh. Yeah, but so now if I need it, I will have to go to, back to the, Investing yeah, in the where, UK. where your people were yeah, to, retrieve to, it. To, to retrieve it and this thing. And it's a very powerful uh, research that I did. Mm. And there are so many things in it. Even a lot of people in the Church of Pentecost do not know, even though they are in the church, mm. they don't know what actually happened. And this uh, PUCPTS thing. Right. I knew how the whole thing was going to end. <laughs> long before they, they now said the, the, the they measure. are listening, yeah, because I had a document. Okay. It was a prophetic word delivered by Macion himself, 1952. I still have a copy of the document about how the church would establish the Bible school, which will run from Accra, and people will come from various places, yeah, to come and be trained. Listen, so. It, I, I looked at it right from the beginning of the Apostolic Faith Church. Mm. 
Apostolic Faith Church was the first Pentecostal denomination which thought that all the ministry gifts and the gifts of the Spirit must operate in the modern church. Okay. <coughs> so they saw a hierarchy in the, mm -hmm. in the, the ministry gifts. Right. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Mm -hmm. So they started that. Then it, it, the, the leader was called Hutchinson. Mm. Then later on, and they were the people who uh, said that prophets were set put in the church to give directives. Okay. So directive prophecy and all that, yeah, yeah. it originated from their uh, teaching. Mm. So they, they prophesied over D.P. Williams, who later on became the head of the, the Apostolic Church. Right, right. You see, so, and then there was a break because Hutchinson was very rigid and this thing, he wouldn't listen to anybody. Mm -hmm. So that brought about the split. The split. Uh -huh. So, and out of Apostolic Church, Makion came. So that was where you traced the, yeah. your, 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 your the, thesis line from. That your, is the, it. The, Things the that happened, happened, how they were using prophecy, the challenges they faced, and all that. You see, so even D.P. Williams initially was not very enthused by the prophetic ministry mm. because he, he was hesitant to accept God speaking to people, giving directions yeah, yeah, the way yeah. it was. So, but later on, he began to accept it okay. because he saw certain things were, I mean, actually true ah. uh -huh, as uh, this thing. So, and, but later on, as other people were coming in and the prophetic ministry was expanding, there were some funny, funny uh, things that were happening. Somebody would prophesy that uh, the fundraising we have done, it should go to missions. Mm -hmm. Another would also prophesy that it should be used to finance a church building. Mm -hmm. So these things were happening. So it got to a point, 1939, mm -hmm. they decided they will not use directive prophecy any longer in the church, okay. the apostolic church. So apostles and prophets must decide who becomes this or that and that and oh, that. Oh, okay. So these are the sequence that you, you traced that is it. in your PhD that is it. level. But later on, mm -hmm. they realized that even the prophetic was safer than allowing people to decide who becomes this or this because there was so much favoritism. So, in 1952, there about, they revived the prophetic, that is, the directive prophecy. Mm -hmm. And that's how the Church of Pentecost also later on picked it up. And they were also having challenges, I mean, these things, until this time and this thing. Okay. So, as we are, this thing, a time will come, if we don't take time, they will, they will reverse this thing too. To because Based on the study. You, you, that you, is it. No, so, now, so let's move back to, now finally, finally, mm -hmm. uh, are you, I, can you then say that you are still lecturing and uh, still also yeah. uh, supervising an area? <laughs> now you are in downtown Fango. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about it whilst we wrap up uh, the area. I know it's a new area. Yeah, it's a You'll new You'll be here area. for a few months yeah, now. Months, yeah. How many just, how many districts do we have in this area? And yeah, we have the way 16, 16 districts. Mm. And uh, I want to put it on record. In fact, Apostle Samuel Otuapia and the wife, they did a very great job. Yes, the administrative structures that slid very sound administrative distance. Yeah. So when I took over, I didn't have much challenge in that area because he had laid down this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think because uh, normally when you are beginning a thing, it's not easy. Yeah. Uh, so for him to have been able to put things in fact, uh, it looks like it's made the thing smoother for me uh, than I the would have. Of, yeah, yeah, if I were to uh, be here the first, mm -hmm. I mean, as the first minister in the area. So I really, in fact, appreciate the good work that he did. Uh, and uh, he, in particular, he's more of a preacher type of person mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. But I, in fact, one of the key areas God has given me is the teaching ministry. Okay. 
So because of the foundation he has laid, it has also helped me a lot. So as I start, um, uh, uh, what the Lord has laid on my heart to teach on, I mean, and bring the financial base of the church to a certain level. And then we we'll look at other areas, <laughs> uh, like evangelism and that kind of thing. Because to do effective evangelism, you need a strong financial mm -hmm. base. So that when we are going to a cru for, for have a crusade, there's money to support and all that. <laughs> right. So by God's grace, in fact, a short time, like some of the as uh, assemblies, when uh, last month, they paid so one one assembly like that they paid thirteen thousand net ties, wow. and this month they paid twenty eight. Wow. Another one twenty five, and now this month forty six. Praise God. You see, uh, I mean, uh, every place that we're seeing improvement. Yeah, we've seen the improvement. Is, is yeah, and the Lord is working. So yeah, right. so we're trying to build a strong financial base, right. and then we add prayer, fasting. Yeah. So this year we are now, we are relaxing a bit. a bit. But from next year... When we start, <laughs> when we start taking off, yeah, then it becomes a lot of level. fasting and prayer ah. and this thing. Then uh, seeing, I mean, a lot of things happening. Right. Yeah, we be I believe in the power ministry right. very much mm -hmm. because that is the thing that I always tell the students, I say, look, what one miracle can do, thousand sermons cannot do that. You see, when Peter uh, healed the cripple at the beautiful gate, 5,000 men gave their life to Christ, excluding women and children. So you can imagine, just one miracle. So I believe that we, we need to build ourselves, much as I believe in holiness, but holiness without power is not what God wants his church to be. He wants the church to be a holy church and, and very, very yeah, operate in the power. Jesus didn't only preach and teach. No. He says he preached, he taught and healed the sick yes. and cast out demons. Right. So all these things. Apostle, before, yes, before we take leave of you, yeah. look into the camera yeah. and speak. Probably somebody is watching for the first time. That yeah. person hasn't, doesn't know Christ Jesus. Yeah. He will welcome that person. And those of us who are still Christians, mm. and we need to still hold fast to yeah. the things of God, your word of encouragement. Yeah. So, um, whoever is watching and then listening, you heard the word of God. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior and Lord, it is necessary to surrender your life to him. You need to understand that it's not just a matter of going to church. Many people go to church. I mean, I hear people saying, Ghana, we are 72% Christian. But if that is true, then a lot of things should have changed in this nation. Mm. But majority, we have a lot of churchgoers, but not actually born again spirit-filled believers. So if you don't know Jesus, I will implore you to accept him as your savior and Lord. And if you want to do that, I will just guide you in a prayer. So say this after me. Jesus, I thank you that you love me. And you gave your life as a sacrifice to redeem me from sin and from every work of the enemy. Today, I invite you into my life. Be my Lord and my master. I will serve you from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And if you are already a Christian, I will want to say that very important that you make sure that you live right before God. Bible says without holiness no man shall see the Lord. So it's not just a matter of oh I've accepted Jesus and even some are baptized in the Holy Spirit. They speak in tongues okay but they are not walking in holiness. So I will implore you to surrender your whole life unto the Lord. Give him first place in your life. And when you do this, you, you will never regret you made this decision today. May the Lord God bless you. Amen. Amen. Papa, may the Lord God Almighty also bless you. Amen. And increase you. his oil upon your life. Lord Thank you so much. Thank you. Beloved, this is where we end the
we bring down the curtains of today's discussion on Periscope with our apostle, Apostle Dr. Benjamin Ali, who is the area head for downtown of Angkor area of the Church of Pentecost. I'm sure you are glad you heard everything. Continue to operate in holiness and don't forget to also operate in the power of Christ by praying, always reading the word of God and also listen to his voice. He will direct you and then you'll perform more for him and his kingdom. My name is Joseph Dodangwa. Thank you so much. God willing, next week, same time, on same television, we will meet. Until then, may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding be with you forever. Amen. Amen. Baba, thank you. Thank you. The Lord bless you.